Welcome to this GE Healthcare educational series on indirect calorimetry. This measurement is part of the GE Healthcare Monitoring Solutions and Respiratory Portfolio. Indirect calorimetry relates to the measurement of pulmonary gas exchange and the quantification of metabolic needs to support clinicians in defining the nutritional requirements of critically ill patients. In this third video, we will be covering various clinical use cases for indirect calorimetry. Let's get started. Critically injured patients experience significant changes in clinical status and metabolic requirements over the course of hospitalization in response to medical and nursing care or complications. Overfeeding and underfeeding is harmful for the patient. For example, if the patient is malnourished, he can become dependent on the ventilator, increasing morbidity and mortality, and increasing hospital length of stay. On the other hand, overfeeding a patient can increase the risk of infection. Acute metabolic changes, as well as calorie and protein deficits, play a major role in patient outcome, thus making accurate nutritional assessment an important tool for improved patient outcomes. The CareScape ESCOVX module provides integrated and continuous indirect calorimetry measurements, supporting clinicians in optimizing nutritional needs of the critically ill patients. Predictive equations estimate energy expenditure. Indirect calorimetry is a measurement, not an estimate. Therefore, it is objective and accurate as it is tailored to each patient. Delivering early nutritional support therapy is seen as a proactive therapeutic strategy that may reduce disease severity, diminish complications, decrease length of stay in the ICU, and favorably impact patient outcomes. Nutritional support is ideally to be started within 48 to 72 hours of ICU admission, and nutritional guidelines advise never to administer more than 70% of the caloric need during the first week of ICU stay to prevent overfeeding. We would now like to introduce some of the most compelling clinical use cases for which indirect calorimetry can support individualized nutritional therapy. Burn patients have an exaggerated metabolic response in magnitude and duration. They have higher resting energy expenditure and require more proteins. The primary goal of indirect calorimetry and nutrition support is to fulfill the calorimetric requirement caused by a hypermetabolic state and to avoid overfeeding. Cardiac surgery patients tend to be malnourished due to poor feeding, low activity, and exercise capacity. They have increased length of stay and higher in-hospital mortality. Studies demonstrate that the specific nutrition therapy in coronary artery bypass graft patients showed improved survival in females and decreased incidence of post-operative arrhythmias in males. A study in polytraumatic patients showed that respiratory quotient tested on day four of admission in the ICU was low in those trauma patients that were not provided with nutritional support. This suggested possible underfeeding, thus making the patients more dependent on the ventilator. Evidence on pediatric patients shows that tailoring nutritional therapy to underfeed the patient is associated with better outcomes, such as shorter PICU and hospital stay. Aspen states that indirect calorimetry is recommended for energy expenditure determination in critically ill children. Obese patients tend to have lower resting energy expenditure. There is a major risk of overshooting or undershooting the caloric need of that patient population with predictive equations. With actual body weight or ideal body weight values, the range of caloric need may greatly vary leading to overfeeding or underfeeding. Indirect calorimetry can measure the right caloric need for this patient population. Patients undergoing infection, for example during sepsis, are hypermetabolic patients. Predictive equations are unreliable during metabolic stress as metabolism changes frequently while fighting infections. Low energy expenditure has been seen in elderly patients in acute sepsis. Finally, 
Malnutrition can affect more than 40% of hospitalized patients aged 65 years and older. Malnutrition is associated with poor outcomes in hospitalized elderly patients, leading to increased mortality risk. Maintaining an appropriate energy balance in these high-risk populations depends on a precise knowledge of patients' energy requirements. Therefore, the benefits of using indirect calorimetry are prevention of over- or underfeeding, fewer days on mechanical ventilation, shorter ICU and hospital length of stay, reduced resource utilization and associated cost savings. Thank you for watching this video series on indirect calorimetry.